Welcome to our Year 6-7 Transition Day Parent Presentation. My name is Mrs New and I am the Principal of CFS and I would like to extend a warm welcome to all of our new Year 7 parents. Whether your child has been with us in the primary phase, perhaps you have other children in the school or in fact you are new to CFS in September, welcome to you all. It's obviously very sad that I can't be meeting you in person today in the school hall as I would usually be doing, but I sincerely hope that this information gives you a little taster of what your child can expect from September. I also hope that they have enjoyed the transition videos that we've shared with them today and that they can continue to dip into them over the next few weeks, helping them feel more, more reassured as they move into the secondary phase after the summer holidays. Many of you will have seen this slide before and I'm not going to uh, dwell too long on it, but I just wanted to remind you of our core values. At CFS, our, our vision is to nurture, challenge and inspire all pupils. And this ethos really does underpin everything that we do. Alongside that, when I became principal last September, I made a promise to all parents, pupils and staff that we would really explore all of the other words on this slide. CFS really is a school that is striving for excellence in all areas. This includes academia, but also our pastoral care of pupils, their social interaction and the opportunities and enrichment activities that we provide for them. We are, of course, an all through school and you may be thinking, yes, but my child's joining you in year seven, so that's not really relevant to them. But the all through nature of our school permeates everything we do even into the secondary phase. On a very um, obvious level, your child will interact with primary children, whether that be through the house system, or maybe they will go down and be buddies and work together in an academic sense. But also we have a very different approach to our teaching and learning, to transition, to ensuring that pupils really make that move into secondary so that they are GCSE ready. And we draw on the expertise that we have in the building of our primary curriculum and where our pupils are starting from in year seven. CFS truly is a vibrant school. It is the bit that's upset me the most over the last few months when the classrooms and corridors have been quiet in lockdown. Over the past few weeks that vibrancy has been returning as we've had a few year groups in and our transition days for other year groups as well. But in September I hope that as much as possible we can get back to some sense of normality and the vibrancy permeates the classrooms, the lessons but also our extracurricular programme which I'll talk about later. It's so important to me now more than ever that we encourage all of our children to be truly global citizens. They need to leave CFS as tolerant, resilient, empathetic, patient individuals. And we work hard to ensure that pupils at CFS have an understanding of all cultures, of all ways of life, and actually the opportunity to experience some of those cultures through our, our residential trips abroad. Again, something unfortunately that was put on hold this year, but I sincerely hope we can get back on track as soon as possible. Progress is at the core of everything we do here. Whilst we obviously strive for pupils to attain as highly as possible, the most important thing is that each child is pushed to achieve their true potential. Every child here truly matters. Every child is put on a bespoke academic journey and encouraged to excel for them. And all of this encompasses that CFS is a happy and safe place and, and it's the pupils that have told us that. We may be a small secondary school, but that does not mean our ambitions are small. And in everything that I do leading the school forward, our ambition is un uncompromising. And we, we try and really foster that in the pupils as well. They may be entering year seven, having a firm plan of where they want to go post-secondary school. Some won't know at all. Some will think they will know and they'll change their minds later on. And we have an extensive and ever developing careers programme where your child 
from as early as year seven will start to explore their options, the, the doors that are open to them so they can make educated choices as they move through secondary school. I'm sure you're aware of this, you've chosen to send your child to CFS, but we received our second Ofsted inspection in February 2019. And as you can see, we managed to maintain good in all areas. This was no mean feat, obviously moving to a new site, which we always said must never compromise the education of the pupils. And Ofsted confirmed what we already knew, we it didn't. But as a year eight pupil told me in April 2019, we are proud of this Ofsted report, but we want even better. And of course, we are now striving to be outstanding, but we can't do that on our own. And it is about the relationship with the parents that will ensure that we get there. You will have received today, alongside a link to this presentation, the parent information pack. So if there's anything that you think that I don't address here, the likelihood is that it is in that pack. We send this out to parents every year. Obviously, as time goes on, there will be some things that don't change for you, but it's also always worth having a read through, sharing key aspects with your child. The ROI, um, which is short for Rhythm of the Year, is our school calendar. This will be coming out to you next week. We're just finalising it at the moment. At CFS, we're really keen to give parents and pupils the heads up as far in advance of key events that are coming up over the next academic year, whether this be our parents' evenings or um, open evening events or indeed school trips where there may be um, a cost to the parents and you need to be able to plan, plan this in advance. We send out the Rhythm of the Year, a first draft, as I like to call it, in July, just for the summer holiday each year. And then we'll send out an update, usually by the end of September. However, as I'll say when I send this out to you next um, week, this year, of course, there is a huge caveat with everything we've planned. Currently, we feel it is right to plan as though September will be, in inverted commas, normal. But of course, we know that there may well be still restrictions on things we are able to do, especially before Christmas. The reason we've still planned everything in is because that is our intent. That is what we want to offer. And what it will do is it will enable one and almost force us to, to look at those events as we get to them. If they can't happen in the normal way, we will do everything in our power to be creative and make them happen in an alternative way, a little bit like this transition day. So there may well be, for example, we have a, an evening very early on where you will get the opportunity to meet your child's year seven maths and English teacher, as well as their tutor. If we can't do that in person still, then we will do it remotely in this way, either through video messages or Zoom calls. So how will your child be grouped for lessons when they start year seven? And again, I'm afraid I have to give a massive caveat for this. This is what we hope to happen. But it may well be that at least for the start of year seven, we need to make adaptations if the bubble system is still in place. But hopefully, and, and this is obviously something that we've, we've launched today, your child will be in a tutor group of up to 30 pupils. They will have found out today um, who their tutor is and hopefully started to find out some of the pupils they will be with. Each tutor group is in a house. We have four houses at CFS, Aquila, Noctua, Pegasus and Phoenix. And I'll talk a little bit more about the house system later on. To try and ease pupils into secondary school, we've made a decision that most of the lessons where pupils are taught in groups of 30, they will remain in these house groups during the course of the year. 
Previously, we've had different tutor groups to teaching groups. And although this can give um, much needed variety as pupils move higher into the school, especially into to years nine and then into their GCSE courses, to begin with, we feel that pupils need that level of consistency to help them make the transition from primary school. Of course, there are some subjects where pupils need to be in smaller groups and indeed some subjects where we have made a commitment for pupils to be in smaller groups. So in English, Maths, DT and Art, pupils will be in smaller groups of 20, a mixture of two of the houses. Your child will have English and Maths every other morning with one teacher. This is the middle school model, inverted commas, which we explained to you during our open evening. We have three teachers, Miss Brett, Mr. Green or Miss Southern, and your child will be one of, uh, with one of those for the majority of the year. They will be taught English and maths by the same teacher, and we have employed these three um, practitioners because of their expertise in both maths and English at Key Stage 3. Please fear not, though, there is still an extremely high level of challenge and vigour in these English and maths lessons. This is the second year we'll be doing this. And even in fact, only six months really, um, last year before we went into lockdown, we had already seen a huge improvement in the progress pupils were making in year seven. These three practitioners are experts, not only in the secondary curriculum, but also in the primary curriculum. And that's really key. It enables them to build on the rigor that those pupils have received in primary school and prepare them for their GCSE studies. Of course, again, a very unique situation this year. We're very aware that there will be a lot of time where pupils haven't received their normal curriculum delivery. They, they weren't able to take their SATs exams as expected. And your child may well not have been in school at all since March. We will, of course, be preparing for this. And much of our work over the summer is to ensure that all children in the school, whatever year group they're, they're in, are able to transition back into a sense of normality as positively, effectively and quickly as possible. As mentioned, we have a house system at CFS. And those um, four words at the top, enrichment, fun, competition and celebration, really do sum up the house system. If you've had um, perhaps older children at the school previously, the house system was our pastoral support system. But last year we made a conscious decision to separate the house system away from that. And I'll talk more about where the pastoral support comes in later and really bring back everything the house system is meant to be. It's a competition. Will Aquila win? Will Noctua win? Will Pegasus win? Will Phoenix win? And the, the real vibe and, and excitement that these competitions create really does carry through the whole school right from reception up to year 13. We're just about to announce the um, House Cup for this year again. Unfortunately, some of our key events this year didn't happen, such as our Sports Day and our House Festival. But I have everything crossed that next year we can do it all properly. So your child will be in a house. They'll know which house they're in. If they've been in our primary school already, they should be continuing their same house. Where possible, we do try and keep brothers and sisters in the same house mainly so that on sports day you're only having to cheer for one team um, but it's that's not as essential anymore obviously because it isn't the pastoral support as such there are house champions in every house these are members of staff they are a mixture of both primary secondary and support staff people who are so dedicated to bringing the house system alive so mr wilson one of our primary teachers is our house champion for aquila Mrs Scriven, our behaviour manager, and Mr Dean, one of our secondary PE teachers, is house champion for Noctua. Miss Pye, who is our food technology teacher, is house champion for Pegasus. And Miss Pye also oversees the house champion team. And finally, if you're in Phoenix, then Mr Cook, one of our primary teachers, is your house champion. But most excitingly, I think, is that we also have leaders within the pupil body. 
So your child will get the opportunity to become a house ambassador or a house hero as they progress through the school. And when they reach the, the very um, top years of the school, they may even get the opportunity to become house president. There are house events nearly every single week. And these range from sporting events, creative events, cross phase events with primary. They might be performing arts events. We have bake offs between staff and pupils and staff themselves get involved with competitions. And all of these events generate house points which go towards the house cup. But your child will also be able to receive house points themselves through um, the praise system. So when they themselves do something um, really positive, whether it be an exceptional piece of work, trying hard, helping somebody out or getting involved in an activity that perhaps has pushed them beyond their own limits, then they will receive house points. These will both go towards their individual totals, which will result in rewards for them as a pupil, but also contribute to the house cup. And it's this community feel that we are really trying um, to generate for pupils to feel that the things they're doing is helping their team. And there is still that family feel because each tutor group, as I've said, will be in one house. So when it comes to sports day, all of Year 7 Aquila are really, really passionately supporting the same team. A pivotal event in the year, and I, I should be sitting here now reflecting on our very first one, but unfortunately it didn't happen. So next year will be our very first one, which is, which is exciting again, is our annual house festival. This is an afternoon evening event um, at, towards the end of the year where pupils will compete in drama, dance and music. A real celebration, but again with that competitive edge towards the House Cup. As I mentioned, your child will have the opportunity to be a leader within the house. But pupil leadership is something so important to me and we've really developed over the last um, year or so, lots and lots of opportunities for your child to get involved if they want to. And as time go, goes on, we do encourage pupils to really push themselves forward and get that leadership experience in, in a certain area. Some of these roles are very public roles, require them to be able to stand up and, and talk to large groups. Others are, are, are perhaps quieter roles and allow pupils to really develop their skills in an area that they feel comfortable with. So your child could be a house ambassador, but they could also be a class council representative. So every term, Heads of year will meet with all of the um, class council representatives in their year group, so four individuals, one from each tutor group, to discuss issues, ideas um, and general things that the pupil body want to, to, to put forward to the staff team. Within that group, one person will be selected, and we try to vary this through the year, to be the year group school, school council representative. And that person will come and meet with myself and a representative from every year group, from year R to year 13, to really bring forward and discuss ways that we can make the school an even better place for our pupils. Pupil voice is so important to us. We also have our mental health ambassadors our librarians, our eco-leaders and our beat bullying mentors. And this is an exhaustive list. Some of those eco-leaders, for example, came from a request and a suggestion from the pupils themselves. So if there's something that your child is passionate about, all they need to do is talk to their tutor and we're usually able to make it happen in some form. So, as you know, my name is Mrs New and I'm principal, but there's a few other key people that you and your child will, will need to be aware of over the coming months. Um, if you go onto the website over the summer holiday, you'll be able to see pictures of all these people. Just be aware that there's lots and lots of information on our website and we're actually updating it all at the moment. So you're probably best to hold off until a little bit later in the summer. And there might be a brief time during the summer where it isn't live, just when we're, we're making the transition. But by August, all of these people, their lovely smiling faces will be there for you to see. 
Mr Ben Phillips is joining us in September from another local secondary school and he's our new deputy principal. He'll be working alongside Mr Hannah, who is more focused on the primary phase, and the two of them are working together to oversee teaching and learning in the school. And this is a really important area for us to drive forward as an all through concept, as I said, really ensuring that as an all through school, we don't have that transition dip that we often see between primary and secondary. Mr Hardwick is our senior assistant principal in charge of behaviour and pastoral. And I know that can sometimes seem um, a negative role in a way, that word behaviour, but behaviour to us is the way that a pupil conducts themselves. And that is both the positive and the times when pupils obviously need to be supported to behave in a more appropriate way. So Mr Hardwick also oversees the prey system and of course the pastoral team should your child ever need extra support um, beyond the the day to day support they get in lessons. Mrs Catherine Holton is our other senior assistant pr principal in charge of inclusion and Mrs Holton oversees the um, special educational needs team and also works with our pupil premium pupils. We also have Mr Stephen Paul, who some of you will know previously as our head of maths. Mr Paul takes on a new role from September. He is our assistant principal in charge of pupil progress. So he will oversee how your child is doing in lessons, their academic um, attainment, how they're progressing, how they're moving towards those all important GCSE targets. And of course, we have Mr Fowler, who is our secondary SENCO, who will work alongside Mrs Holton. The other important people for you to be aware of in the school is, of course, your child's head of year seven, Miss Oxley. If you haven't already, please do have a look at the video that Miss Oxley produced for pupils a couple of weeks ago, welcoming them to the school. And you'll have also seen on that video, Mrs. Hermans, who, who is our pastoral officer for year seven and will work directly with Miss Oxley and be very accessible to pupils in the key stage three pastoral office. Your child has been placed in a tutor group, which has been allocated um, to them today, and they should have found out which house they're in and who their new tutor is. And I hope that they're also have enjoyed hopefully meeting the tutor in the Zoom meeting. So our Aquila tutors are Mrs Lloyd and Mrs Douglas, who are our two music teachers. Mr Day, our head of PE, is our Noctua tutor. Pegasus tutor group is overseen by Miss Pye, who, who, as I've mentioned, is also our Pegasus house champion. So I'm sure that's going to be an extremely competitive group. And Mr Hughes, our second in English, is our Phoenix tutor. As you know, our English and maths teachers are Miss Brett, Miss Southern and Mr Green. Now, these are the main people that I would foresee you needing to contact if you had any concerns or queries in the school, especially with um, your child's academic or pastoral progress. The first person for you to contact is always your child's tutor. They will ensure that the information gets disseminated to the right people or in fact, if it is a query that they are unable to support you with, we'll refer it on to Miss Oxley, Mrs Hermans, or another member of the senior leadership team. However, if there are times when you want to ask a more general query, perhaps about uh, timings of a school trip, then please do still use the office at um, email address, but your tutor's email addresses will all be on the website from September. There is also on the website and in the parent pack that we've um, sent out to you today, a table outlining who should I contact if. So for each particular query, who is the best person to go to? I would really encourage you to do that as it really helps us ensure that we respond to your query in the, the, the most effective and prompt way possible. Sometimes if parents email a multitude of people, the email can get lost as, as, as staff are not always sure who is, who is responding to it. So if in doubt, email the tutor and they'll make sure that your query gets to the right person if they can't help you themselves. 
the secondary school day. Now I'm 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 not outlining the exact um, timings of lessons and things here because we're very aware that with the um, alterations that are probably needed in September, that it may well be that we may need to make some tweaks to the current timetable. But um, our, our intention is that day will start at 8.20 and the day will begin with a 30 minute morning tutor time. And that seems a, perhaps a long time, but actually it's a really important time of the day. Yes, your child will be registered here, but they'll also receive their tutor notices for the day, which will outline things like classroom changes, um, club information, um, what's going on at lunch times and, and things like that. It's also a time for your tutor to do a uniform and equipment check. And again, that word check can sometimes seem a negative thing, but it's your, the child's tutor is there to really support your child in getting the standards right so that they can support them in that morning slot so they don't go then into the rest of their day and get into trouble in all their lessons for, for having something not quite correct. It's also a time for group support, group discussions. We also have our year group assemblies in this slot. So once a week, year seven, instead of going into their tutor base, will actually go into the Carmelite Hall and receive an assembly from Miss Oxley. And tutors will also engage in one to one mentoring during these tutor times. Obviously, then lessons begin um, and breaking up the day to give children that much needed um, recreation time and social time with their peers. We have a 30 minute morning break and a 40 minute lunch break. And this slightly longer lunch break allows for clubs and house events to happen on every day. Compulsory school, as we call it, ends at 3.30 for all. But Mondays to Thursdays, we have an extended day program, which runs from 3.30 to 4.30 as the norm, although some um, clubs do run later and they will be communicated to you. During this time, we have a range of clubs, but we also have supervised study. This is an opportunity for your child to remain in school and complete all of their homework with the, um, under the care of a member of staff and with their peers. We also do conduct some interventions in this time. And obviously, I'm sure you're all thinking about um, the catch up fund that's being discussed at the moment in the media. This is obviously a time of day when we would look to put in interventions where appropriate. As your child moves um, into the, the higher years towards GCSE, there'll be lots of revision clinics. And of course, I really hope that your year seven child is, is gonna get involved with our sports fixtures or our production re rehearsals, and these also happen at this time. This is just an example day of what the offer might look like on any given day. So across the day, your child, first of all, they can go home at 3.30, or they can stay for supervised study, or in the older years, revision clinics. They might go to a school production rehearsal, or to football club, or cross country club. They might engage in touch typing, which is a intervention that our inclusion department run to enable pupils who struggle more with handwriting to engage with a PC or laptop. There are many bespoke interventions from the LSA team. And as I've previously mentioned, we imagine that these will increase quite rapidly next year as we all get used to our new normal. We then have more bespoke clubs such as Fantasy Games Club and Art Club, which spans um, the primary and secondary phases, more house events, beat bullying mentors may meet, jazz band, and lots of other music clubs. And there's even the opportunity for secondary pupils to go and lead a primary club because the primary clubs are happening at the same time. This is not an exhaustive list. This is just an example of what it might be on offer for your child on any given day. The club list will be being released to you as soon as possible with clear information of how you need to, to choose. And your child will need to choose each term what they want to do each day and then commit to that to a term. It enables us to obviously monitor numbers, but also ensure that at 3.30 to 4.30, we, we really do know who is in the building, obviously for safeguarding reasons. If your child is somebody who does extensive clubs out of school, then we completely support them going home at 3.30 every day. 
However, we do hope that all pupils in the school will engage with at least one extracurricular activity during the week. But as I say, if that's something that they already do out of school, then in no way do we want to, to take up their time when they perhaps would normally be at an external club. The rewards and sanctions system. This was an, a new system that we put in place last year and it has been hugely successful. Obviously, there is the negative on there, the sanctions, but those those are there to ensure that every child in the school has the ability to learn in a positive and conducive environment to study. And it's really important that we do accept that young people will make mistakes and we do um, make sure that we support them in that by issuing sanctions where appropriate. And for you as a parent, I think being safe in the knowledge that if there is an individual in your child's class who isn't behaving appropriately, we do deal with it and we deal with it very effectively. But most importantly to me is that we see the flip side of that. We will reward pupils as well. And as you can see on this, this diamond image, we, we have a graduated response of rewards and sanctions. Now, we don't, it's not a ladder. We don't climb up the rewards or, or climb down the sanction ladder, so to speak. Depending on, on what the pupil has done, they can go in at any point. So if a pupil has done something absolutely amazing, they could immediately receive what we call an R4, which is a nomination towards either a head of year award or indeed the principal's award. So what happens is every week I look at all the R4s and I then pick out the ones that really stand out to me. The rest still get their R4, which is four house points and a um, contact home from the head of year. But the those who have been promoted, so to speak, to the R5 will receive the principal's award, which is, well, I think a really fantastic um, treat for the pupils. On a Friday afternoon, they get a little bit of time out of lessons with me in my office where you have cake, hot chocolate, play Uno, which seems to be the game of choice at the moment. Um, and that's with pupils from across the school so um, the primary pupils are involved in that as well and in some respects that's the bit that the secondary people seem to enjoy the most actually working with sort of five six year olds playing Uno. Everyone leaves with massive smiles on their faces um, and then I spend uh, before I go home I spend a little bit of time picking up the phone to you as parents and talking to you individually about why your child has received the principal's award. But on a day to day basis, your child will be receiving house points. And if they receive a certain number in a week, again, I spend my Mondays emailing out to you as parents to inform you that they've just had a really good week doing lots of little things, but lots of little things well. And we feel that's just as important as the standout moments. On the flip side, we do communicate daily um, when there are concerns about behaviour, whether that be because a child has had to be moved into a different lesson temporarily or has received a more serious sanction where they've needed time out of lessons during the next working day. But all of that, we keep you in the loop, we keep communicating with you and we work together to ensure that our pupils have a positive experience at school. Now, homework. Obviously, it's taken a whole new meaning now as basically pupils have been working at home for a long time this year. But going forward, we see homework as supplementing and supporting the curriculum delivered in school. And most importantly, I feel developing those independent skills that pupils really do need, especially as they move into GCSE. We don't want to overload pupils, but we do, of course, want to prepare them. Um, for their later study years. So on average, a pupil should expect in year seven about 30 minutes, perhaps up to an hour of homework each weeknight um, and um, the equivalent of the weekend. But again, we will monitor that closely. And if you feel that your child is receiving too much or not enough, then please just communicate with their tutor and, and we will look into that. We don't have a set homework timetable as in each night a certain subject is issued because each tutor group has a different timetable. And so that's not something that can be consistent across the year group. But what we do is we make sure that when a homework task is set, 
pupils are given a week to complete it. This means that perhaps if they have opted to do supervised study just two nights a week, that they can make sure that wherever their homework's been set, they're able to, to complete some of that work in those, those supervised study slots. And again, it, it gives pupils that opportunity to start developing and managing their own time. But of course, they will need yours and our support with that. As mentioned, although we call it homework, pupils can opt to complete their homework at school. And those pupils that do actually choose to do supervised study Monday to Thursday often get the majority of their work done before they go home. Key thing is, of course, that you want to know how your child is doing. And although parents rightly say to me the most important thing to them, especially at the start of year seven, is to ensure that their child is happy and feels comfortable in the secondary environment. Very quickly, of course, you do want to know that they're also progressing well academically. We base all of our um, reporting on a progress based system. So we comment on how well your child is progressing academically, considering where their starting point is and considering how they're moving forward um, towards, in the end, the end of the five year academic journey to GCSE. We don't start mentioning GCSEs too early to the pupils um, explicitly in the classroom, but behind the scenes, that is, it is what we're focusing on and what we want to report to you of how they're progressing towards that end point. We provide lots of formative feedback in the classroom and to you as parents about how your child is doing, but also how they can, can improve further. Every child is placed on a unique academic journey based on where they start at, at the beginning of year seven, which of course is again very different this year to normal because they've They've been out of normal education for quite a few months now. Um, and we look very quickly to, to ensure that we're pushing them um, to an appropriate level as they move towards their GCSEs. But we also know that, that pupils can change and, and certainly we don't, we don't have preconceived ideas. We don't set things in stone. And, and even by year 10, 11, we're often discussing with you altering target grades, for example, which get released to pupils and parents in year 10 based on wanting to push children to an even higher level, or perhaps your child is feeling overwhelmed by the pressure that's being placed on them. Your child will receive three reports a year, two progress reports, where the, um, it is reported whether your child is on track or not. So is your child making the progress we would expect of them as an individual, not compared to their peers, because we recognise that different people progress at different rates, but them individually, are they making the progress we would expect them to do? So that if they continued in that way, they would get to GCSE and achieve their full potential. And this progress report uses, um, reflects the colour coded system, which you can see there on the slide, which actually underpins a lot of the um, feedback that we provide to pupils throughout the school, not just in um, academia, but you will have seen it on the praise and sanction um, diamond as well. So if a child is, is basically doing as they should be doing, and our expectations are high, so doing as you should be doing is an achievement, they're green. They're green for their effort, they're green for their praise point, or they're green for their academic progress. They are on track, they are working well, and if they continue in this way, they will go on to achieve great things at the end of their secondary journey. There will be times, of course, in all three areas, whether it be effort, praise and sanctions, or indeed academic progress, where things perhaps aren't quite going as well as they should be. A few tweaks need to be made in certain areas. And like a traffic light system, your child therefore will be orange, improvement needed. And of course, unfortunately, there are occasions where children do are struggling a lot in a particular area 
and this is our cause for concern or red and these are the areas obviously in in the behavior diamond um, where we would be contacting you very urgently about concerns of behavior this is also academically where a child will need some extra support from us to ensure that they get back on track and are not red for too long obviously the longer they're in in that red area the harder it is to pull back up as they move through the secondary school. But of course, we're a school, although we have very ambitious targets and ambitions for our pupils, it doesn't mean that there aren't pupils who excel and actually beat these expectations. And we feel it's really important to celebrate that. And that is our purple colour, the exceptional layer. That's the principal's award. That's the, the top learning profile or, or effort score, as we call it. And it is, of course, for pupils who have actually made even more progress in their learning than we would, um, we would normally expect at that particular moment in time. We've actually started to adopt these colours now on our reports for the house points, uh, the behaviour points and indeed attendance. And I think that's really important because often we, um, on the reports and to pupils, we tell them how many house points they've got or how many behaviour points they've got. But out of context, that's, that's not overly helpful. What is a good number of house points at that moment in the year for a year seven? So we use the colours to, to show how, the, how your child is doing relative to their peers. So you have a really clear idea if they're green, well, you know, they've got a really strong number of house points that's at the higher end of pupils in year seven. If they're purple, that magic number that, that previously is, has perhaps been a little bit unknown as to what it might mean will tell you that they're excelling and this needs to be celebrated. So as well as the three reports a year, the two progress and, and then there's a full report at the end of the year. The only difference with the full report is that pupils get a more extensive comment from their um, teachers in all subject areas. We also have planned two evenings for you to come in and speak face to face with your child's teachers. Now, of course, as, as mentioned at the start, these are the sorts of things, especially that first one in September, that we may have to do in a more um, virtual fashion. But fingers crossed, we can actually get you in the building at that point. So quite early on in September, we have a Meet the Tutors and English Maths Teacher Evening. Now, at this point, there is going to obviously be limited data as such to, to, for, the, for those teachers to be telling you exactly how your child's progressing academically. But we feel this is a really important moment for you to just get a, a taster of how your child is settling in. And then the full PPC, as we call it, Parents' Evening or Pupil Progress Consultation is in March. Um, an extended time there of five to eight to enable people to attend after work. And this is an opportunity for you to book appointments um, with all of your child subject teachers if you wish. That seems obviously a long way. and We do try and stagger. Obviously, you're getting the report at Christmas. You get another one at Easter and the final one in July. But that doesn't mean they're the only times that we'll communicate with you. We'll be in, in contact if there's ever concerns, but also we would encourage you if you have a worry um, that, that, that crops up, that you don't feel can wait till March, then please do drop your, um, tutor, your child's tutor an email and we can address that quickly. So a few other points to note as, as we near the end of this presentation. The canteen and the cashless system, this is all out outlined in the, the parent pack that you've been sent. But we do have a, a fully running canteen now. Again, fingers crossed this will all be able to work as normal in September. We'll let you know if not. Um, the canteen is extremely popular. It serves both hot and cold food at both break times. And I know that a lot of our pupils actually go at, at the morning break it's a little bit quieter then and purchase a sandwich or something which they then eat later. It is a cashless system though, um, and so pupils at the start of the year will get their fingerprints um, taken and parents will be logged on to parent pay. You'll be able to put money onto the system for your child to then use in school. It also does allow you to see what they're actually purchasing in school because the parent pay system logs the purchases that are being made. 
Uniform and equipment is obviously something very important and I haven't explicitly addressed it here, but that's because you have all the information. It's in the parent information pack um, and the um, uniform policy has been released to you previously. Please do be aware that there have been a few changes to our uniform into September. So you, if you've had a child at CFS before, do be aware specifically um, girls wearing ties now and um, the, the black skirt for girls instead of the former tartan pattern. However, um, if you have, especially if your child's coming up from our primary school or perhaps you've got an older child who you are hoping to pass down um, the skirt, then you are welcome, your child is welcome to wear that for the first two years. We want, we've given ourselves a two year transition to ensure that there's no um, economic wastage of, of the uniform that's already been purchased. Parent pay I've mentioned, um, you'll all get logged on to that and it's your way of paying for things like school trips as well. So it's a really um, efficient system that enables um, you to be in control of money that's coming into the school rather than um, giving cash to your pupils, which is something that we actively discourage. I've had a few questions about iPads and I did address this in, in my letter to you a couple of weeks ago. We have previously been an iPad school, but going forward, we are looking to alter our system slightly to give our pupils and of course you as parents more flexibility. Now don't panic if you have already purchased an iPad for your child, or in fact, you've got um, a, another child in the school who has an iPad. Any system that we move to will ensure can be accommodated by the iPads as well. We're not removing that capability. What we're trying to do is to broaden um, the options that parents have and that children can bring in, as we do know that iPads do have sometimes quite a hefty price tag with them. So for now, our recommendation is that you do not purchase a new device for your child. We will ensure that in the first term in year seven, there is no um, expectation that, that devices are, are in use. And in fairness, we don't expect every child to, to have a, a device at any point. We always adapt our teaching, knowing that some children in the room will and some won't, and we do have spare devices ourselves. But by Christmas, we will have cemented our plans going forward. And it is my hope again, hopefully face to face, that I'll be able to talk to you in person between now and Christmas about the options that are now available to you. So for now, my recommendation is to hold off um, until we, we can all be sure of, of the devices going forward. We were hoping to be in the position by now to be telling you all the different devices that would work on our new system, but unfortunately lockdown has delayed that slightly, but I don't want to delay it by a whole year. Mobile phone policy, um, again, outlined in our parent pack. We made a very conscious decision about 18 months ago that the school is a mobile phone free site and that has actually been so beneficial it has reduced um, behavioral concerns it's increased social ability it was it was amazing the first day that the mobile phones went away and children were actually talking to each other at lunchtime instead of all sitting looking at their phones and it's reduced distractions in the classroom now the policy is very clear we're not saying that there can be no mobile phone on site it's no visible mobile phone. So if your child has quite a long uh, journey to and from school and you understandably want them to be able to, to have a mobile phone to contact you when they're off the school site, then they can of course have their mobile in, the in their bag, tucked away, switched off during the course of the day. In school though, we mustn't see those mobile phones. And if mobile phones are seen, then they are confiscated for the rest of the day. Now we understand that sometimes this is a genuine mistake, um, especially at the start of year seven. And so initially a warning is given, the mobile's taken and, and, and simply given back at the end of the day. Where there are persistent abuses of our policy, um, we will put in higher sanctions, such as contacting home and asking parents to come and collect the mobile phone. But we'd ask for your support in this. 
We often get questions of what if my child needs to contact me during the school day, then they go to either the school office or their pastoral office and they ask to use the, the, the school phone if they need with the permission of their um, the teacher in there to, to just briefly look at their phone to get the right number. That's absolutely fine, but they should be using the school phone to make contact, not their own phones. As I mentioned, um, the parental relationship between um, us is so important at CFS. How we work with you as parents is integral to the success that our children experience at the school. To really formalise that, we have two parental groups. We have the CFS Friends, who are a group of volunteers who conduct a lot of fundraising for the school. They will run our Christmas fair, our summer fair, and lots of other events, which you, you will see on the school calendar. If you want to be part of the CFS Friends, then there's information in the parent pack of how you can get involved. And we would encourage as many people as possible. It's quite, an you know, a, if there's not many people doing it, it's, it's a lot to fall on their shoulders. But the more people that can get involved, the more that we can spread, spread that support and also increase the fundraising for the school. As well as that, we have our parent ambassador group. And these are representatives from across the school who we meet with myself every term to discuss pressing matters in the school for me to run by them. Um, key changes, for example, I, I brought the, the uniform changes to the parent ambassadors and the year before some of our house um, and shape of the day changes to them. So it's really good to have that mutual dialogue between myself other members of the senior leadership team and the parent body. They are ambassadors. They obviously represent um, the thoughts that you that, that you are putting across. And there is an email address where you can get in contact with them. Again, all outlined in the in the pack and on the website. And of course, if you're interested in becoming a parent ambassador, then do um, drop them an email and you can become part of that group. It's on the calendar. You'll see this when it's released next week. We are really desperately hoping that we will have our team building day next term as normal for year sevens. In previous years, they've, they've sometimes gone off on a residential, but we felt that that's, that's quite early for some pupils and, and, and quite a hefty cost as well. So last year, we brought the event onto site and it was extremely successful. Now, November might seem quite a long time away to have a team building event. Why not do it in September? Well, that is the, that was always the plan and, and that was where it was originally placed. But this is an event that wouldn't be able to be done virtually. And so we've kind of given ourselves a little bit more time and hopefully, therefore, a bit more likelihood that it can happen by moving it slightly later in the year. So fingers crossed. If your child is a musician or indeed wants to be a musician, we have a whole host of peripatetic music lessons outlined in the pack of how you can get involved with that. And they run during the course of the school day. Just to make you aware that uh, Mrs Lloyd is returning this year after a maternity leave um, as, our, as one of our teachers of music, but is stepping back from leading the music department. And Mrs Douglas, who is one of your child's, um, one of the tutor team in year seven, is taking over as subject lead. Mrs Douglas is new to the school in September, obviously can't really get into the building much at the moment. So just bear with her. As, as, as she finds her feet and we get the peripatetic music lessons sorted for your child. Again, unfortunately, this is an aspect which we might be quite limited on initially due to the rules of visitors being on site and bubbles and so forth. But certainly it is there as soon as possible. And so when does all this begin? Well, I hate to use that word intend and I, I genuinely never thought I would be saying this, but our intention is that the start of term will be in September on Tuesday the 7th of September and that is actually marked on the calendar as an inset day for staff but we invite year sevens in because we feel it is really important for them to have some time in the building before everybody else arrives and to be honest now more than ever 
as they haven't had that opportunity on this normal transition day. So pupils will come in at two o'clock for just an hour and a half in full school uniform and it also allows us to iron out any issues with uniform or equipment so that when they arrive on the Wednesday morning with everybody else, they're feeling that little bit more confident. That's my hope, I have everything crossed, but of course I will be in touch over the summer as we know more um, the guidance is due out in the next week or so, but as I've said to current CFS parents, we would be naive to put in cemented plans this early because, as we know, the progression of the virus itself, things can change. It is my hope that, that by kind of the late middle of August, we can we can really tell you exactly what's happening. And I know that's very difficult for everyone, but please know that we are responding as quickly as we can to the ever changing picture. So CFS, I'm so excited to be welcoming your children into the secondary phase of the school, whether they're new to the school or have been here for many years. I can't wait to meet them in person and also to meet you properly as well, as soon as the time allows it. But as the final slide says, it is our ambition to nurture, challenge and inspire your children. And we, we do not underestimate how important we will be to your child's life over the next five years. It is therefore so important that we keep this line of communication open so that we can both communicate with each other if we have any concerns or, of course, any, any positive things to share. Thank you very much for the time and listening to this. I appreciate that's nearly an hour of your time, um, but hopefully a, perhaps a bit cosier sat in your lounge listening to me than coming into the school hall itself. I sincerely hope that you will have a very safe and happy summer, especially after the past few months. And I look forward to hopefully returning to some sense of normality and welcoming your children into the building in September. Take care.